Hello. This is a video on six very frightening chemicals that you should not ingest. All right, coming in at number six, we have phenazepam, or bromdihydrochlorphenol benzodiazepine. It's a benzodiazepine that's primarily used in Russia and other former Soviet bloc countries. It's a somewhat typical benzodiazepine, uh, the same class of drugs as Valium or Xanax. And similar to those, it's useful for sleep, uh, it can help you calm down from panic attacks. Uh, the scary part about this one is that A, it is particularly prone to causing amnesia, and B, it has a very long half-life for a benzo. So alprazolam, better known as Xanax, lasts about six hours. Phenazepam, on the other hand, lasts almost three days. So, which means, uh, if you take enough to induce amnesia, aka blackout, if you take more phenazepam at any point during the next three days, you will stay blacked out, and this can kind of just continue on indefinitely. As a result of the uh, notoriously responsible behavior of people blacked out on benzos, phenazepam has a particular reputation for being uh, jail pills. But let's say you want something different. For example, exactly different. See, phenazepam, like other benzos, is a GABAergic positive allosteric modulator. How about a GABAergic negative allosteric modulator? Enter number five, ZK93426. This stuff behaves like an anti-benzo. Whereas benzos are known for stopping panic attacks, making you fall asleep, uh, and forget stuff, ZK93426 does the opposite. It improves memory, causes insomnia, and most notably induces panic attacks. Is there anything worse than an injectable panic attack? Oh yes, lots of things. For example, MPTP. In 1976, an undergraduate chemistry student at the University of Maryland named Barry Kidston was attempting to synthesize a compound called MPPP, which was an unscheduled and, at the time, legal analog of pethidine, which is a controlled opioid similar to morphine. But after synthesizing it and giving it a try, uh, Kidston started feeling kind of Parkinson's-y. After being brought to the hospital, the doctors were initially skeptical of him having Parkinson's due to the fact that he was 23 years old. However, after his symptoms improved following treatment with Levodopa, a Parkinson's medication, they started to look for an explanation. As it turns out, Kidston's batch of MPPP was inadvertently contaminated with a chemical called MPTP, which can be described as injectable Parkinson's. Is it permanent? You betcha it's permanent. So technically, MPTP doesn't actually cause Parkinson's. It's just metabolized into something called MPP+, which then deletes your dopaminergic neurons, uh, which then causes Parkinson's. Um, Kidston sadly died about a year afterwards. From Parkinson's? No, uh, due to the wonders of modern medicine, he was able to get his symptoms under control enough to explode his heart with cocaine. Next on the list, uh, we're getting a little trippy with it, with 2CP, aka 2,5-dimethoxy-4-N-propylphenolethylamine. This is a mescaline derivative and a psychedelic amphetamine. It's well known for being extremely potent, long-lasting, and amongst psychedelics, unusually prone to causing a phenomenon known as unspeakable horrors. And so that sounds like that might suck. Um, let's check the Psychonaut wiki page on it. Ooh, man, that is a lot of Bikinski paintings. All right, for number two, I'm gonna ask the question, what if the military-industrial complex was able to weaponize the Hat Man? Well, that's what EA-3167 was designed for uh, back in the 60s. Also, like, ew. This, this thing is unholy. Um, the EA stands for Edgewood Arsenal. So typically, pharmaceutical companies do not have names that contain the word arsenal. You know how Benadryl is a horrifying delirium in high doses? You know, you'll be seeing spiders and you know, zombies and feeling horrible and talking to people that aren't there. Um, yeah. Not fun. Um, well, this is that, but like a billion times worse. And active at doses of uh, as little as 0.2 milligrams. I will now read to you the symptoms. The intensity of EA-3167's effects is unparalleled among known psychoactive substances of any class. Incapacitating effects can last anywhere from 5 to 10 days, sometimes manifesting as a full 3-day peak of vivid hallucinations along with prolonged confusion, amnesia, and inhibition of speech and cognition. Some subjects exposed to the drug would not recover fully for almost 20 days. 
Even six months after exposure, a few subjects uh, demonstrated significant increases in the scores on the hypochondriasis, depression, hysteria, psychasthenia, schizophrenia, and mania skills. The drug's potency caught the attention of the military, uh, which considered weaponizing EA-3167 for topical use, potentially even through a handshake. Uh, however, weaponization and further studies were eventually abandoned, possibly due to the extreme nature of the effects and the strain on available study resources caused by conducting human studies for extended periods. And finally, the number one scariest chemical, or I mean, drug, I mean, I'll just say drug, it's late enough in the video, then, if that's what this is. Bromo Dragonfly. See? Because it looks like a dragonfly. So this is another psychedelic phenylethylamine, uh, specifically of the benzodiferin class. Well, it's it's kind of a phenylethylamine. It's, I mean, it, it's uh, an affront to God. It, it's, you know, they made it based on how the molecule looked. So the most notable trait is that it makes your arms and legs fall off. See, this substance is known for a uh, recurring theme here, having an extremely long duration. And in particular, the duration of this experience scales almost linearly with dosage. So, in the event of an overdose, you're going to be having a bad time for a long time. Now, obviously, it causes all the classic psych overdose greatest hits, like terrifying hallucinations, psychosis, etc. Um, however, Bromo Dragonfly is also known for causing extreme vasoconstriction. Like, to the degree that it makes your arms and legs turn black and fall off. It's also extremely potent uh, by weight, but thankfully this one has largely ceased being manufactured, um, following a rash of, like, 50 uh, or so deaths in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Don't make designer drugs um, based on the molecules looking cool. Um, I guess is the lesson from that one. And overall, um, don't do these. Like and subscribe. Call me right, I creep at night.